Well, welcome to Gaelic Football St. Patrick's Day Parade. Cross McGlen Rangers have made the long march south to Dublin for the All-Ireland Club Football Final. And here the respective St. Pats of Dungannon and Armagh have made all of the big strides in the McCrory Cup to journey's end at Casement Park. Well, they, they put out Mahara, that's the reigning champion, so I said I don't know who the favourites. I said I'd take them to the favourites anyway. Yeah, it's a great honour. I've thought about it actually since that day in Kalein in 91 when we first won the trophy. But what it feel like to captain a team into a cry final. So far it's been good. Oh, Highlights from that All Ireland Club final a little bit later on, but first it's the McCrory Cup final here at Casement Park. St. Pat's against St. Pat's on St. Pat's Day. And a Tyrone field of the day all round. Quite a few of the Armagh players have connections, as does the commentator, of course, Adrian Logan. Yes, Mark, I must declare an interest right away. An important day. This for St. Patrick's Academy of Dungannon, my old school. We played McCurry Cup football in my day. Perhaps that's why we never even made a final. The Academy have named this side for today's game. Winners, of course, over Mahara in the semi-final. They have an outstanding player in the shape of their captain and college's all-star, Paul McGurk. In attack, a lot of the focus will be on the number 11, Brian McGuigan, who scored the winning goal in that semi-final win. And one change, Gary Hetherington, with number 17 on his back, comes in and replaces William Lyons. It's likely that Hetherington will play at full-back today. Meanwhile, Armagh have won the Macquarie Cup 13 times, but their last victory was back in 1953. They were beaten in the final in 1994 by Mahara. 50 years ago, they celebrated success with the late, great Iggy Jones. And the Iggy Jones Memorial Trophy will be awarded today to the man of the match. Several contenders for that award in this Armagh side. The jewel in their crown, perhaps, will forward Barry Gordon. He's hit four goals and 14 points so far. Alongside him, an attack watch out for Paul Holmes and Patrick McKeever. Incidentally, four Tyrone players on this Armagh lineup. And the referee for today, Pat McEnany, very experienced, the man in charge of the All-Ireland final last September. And the Monaghan man, of course, was the man in the middle in last year's McCrory Cup decider. The midfield men shake hands. Pat McEnany has checked with his Lions men, checks the watch. The whistle goes, and there's the McCrory Cup final for 1997 underway. Immediately into the action, Armagh on the attack. It was John Tolder, number eight, who had the ball, but the referee penalised him for carrying. And that's McGurk, Paul McGurk, the captain, who's moved into play corner back with Gary Hetherington, the number 17, taking his place at the edge of the square. Homer back and Allen gives it into early, a real opportunity, fits it! There's the score for the Academy, the opening goal in the first few minutes of the McCrory. The Armagh defence at sixes and sevens, early in the clear, and he found the target. Quick thinking, the ball goes over the two defenders. Early gets it, the keeper really. Well, Kelly Ryan. And Ryan Kelly really had little opportunity with that particular effort. There it goes. That's a golden goal for the Academy in the opening seconds. Seamus Donaghy will put this one out deep in towards the middle of the park. Paul McCormick, the hurling all-star, gets the decision for Armagh, and then they will leave it to Paul Holmes, who will nip across to the far side. Holmes, a college's all-star this year, he's already nipped over 22 points in the McCrory Cup campaign so far. Looking now for number 23, it could be hard against the breeze. Decides to play it short. A 
this could be a fine score from John Toll, the captain. A good combination player from Armagh. Toll plays the captain's role. Lovely little ball through for the midfielder. Where was the academy defence? But Toll certainly knew the way to the posts. Good point, Armagh. Donahue again with the advantage of the breeze, but it's watched all the way by uh, number six, Cormac McAnallan, the Eglish player. Gives it back into Toll, an inspirational captain for Armagh. It's the ball through, could be real danger here for Dungannon. That's beautiful stop by Gordon on the run, he's under pressure, brought down. Referee right up with the places. He already said play away, tried to give advantage, but then he gave the penalty. And in the end, really, referee McInerney had no option and no choice. Gordon picked it up beautifully, put the academy defence under real pressure, tried to go past Hetherington, sandwiched once, twice, three times. And referee McInerney eventually decides the penalty. And the penalty will be taken by number 13, Shane Kelly. So Kelly against Donaghy. The penalty for Armagh. Who's going to win this one? Oh, he blasts it the wrong side and wide. And that certainly will be a hard pick for young Shane Kelly, the cheering and Oak player. But it's certainly been a lively enough start here in this McCrory decider. One goal for the academy, a point for Armagh, and a penalty missed by Armagh as well. As Armagh come once more, the referee wants it back, take it on the proper spot. Makes the signal very, very clear indeed. Comrade McAnallan will leave it to number 15, Paul Holmes. He looked for the short one the last time and the, they got a point as a result. This time he's intent to drive it in towards the box. Could fall for anyone. Calls for Armagh, real opportunity the midfielder. He turns the number nine, the ball screws off his boot. But Donaghy collects the ball easily. David Turley's effort just hadn't enough power for him. And the academy again give away a free, and it'll be Paul Holmes once more. Very busy corner forward in the opening stages of this McCrory game. And perhaps this is more of the range for Paul Holmes, the Tyrone Miner. Looking for point number 23. He watches it all the way. He was happy enough as soon as he kicked it. A fine score from the corner man. That's his 23rd of the campaign, and it's Armagh's second of this final. Goal to the academy, two points to Armagh. Beautiful turn by Richard Thornton. Thornton has got speed. Once more to early, look to be tripped. Referee right up to the play agrees. that will be a free kick once more to the academy. And this time early will elect to take it from his hands. Or a number of superb long-range frees like this in the semi-final victory over Mahara. He should get this one. Indeed he does. The Academy out to the scoreline, a goal and a point. As the Academy come again. And this is Kevin Corey, the youngest player on the Academy side, only 16. Nips it in, the ball comes back in again to Somerville. And Gannon Clark's lad gives it back to Early. Thought about the opportunity. Thought about it again. There's one thing about Martin Early, he is accurate. He proved it once again. The referee just in his way, he hesitated for a second. But straight over the black spot once more. The academy stretched their lead to three points. Shane Kelly picks it up, he's got McKeever in support, he gets it back to him, he was already fouled. McKeever, the Ballyhagan player, lofts it down and deep towards McCork again. McGurk and Gordon, the referee says McGurk this time fouled him. And there's a quick free kick. The ball brought in real danger here for the academy. And just for a second, the goals opened up. Mark Conley, a young man with a very mature head, saw the goals right in front of him, but elected to take the score. And in the end, a very sensible, a very sensible option indeed. A pure good play by the centre half back. Determined lad, the Donovan player. The ball nipped out far side here to it. Kevin Corey and Corey goes in the run. He's got space. He look at the target. He loves it. 
That's a fine, fine score from Kevin Corrick. The youngest player on the park, and that was the score of the game. And Declan McCauley, the arm uh, defender, the number five, will be spoken to as you see the ball going over the bar. Referee Pat McEnany saw something off the ball he wasn't happy with. And the defender's name goes into the scorebook. Thornton being pursued by David Turley. Gets it back in again. And Martin on the run, the ball was loose. That's good play by Conlon, the fullback. He's a big, big, strong fullback. He's certainly enjoying this contest. And the referee spotted an infringement. He penalised uh, Patrick McKeever. Arma not too happy with that decision, but it will be a free into the academy. Just one three, three points in favour of the academy. And early with the opportunity to increase their lead. Well, he has the distance. Has he got it on target? Indeed he has. Made the remark earlier in the commentary that Early is a very, very accurate player. An all-star, college's all-star last year. And he certainly has brought his shooting boots to Casement Park this afternoon. Toll going through so, so much work. The referee says this time that Shane Kelly was fouled. He parted in quickly to Patrick McKeever. McKeever almost in his own, he goes in his own on the run, this is a fantastic effort by McKeever, he's got a man inside, he flicks it back, a real opportunity. Oh, and Armagh once again with the opportunity of the goal, Paul Holmes turned, the academy defenders to be fair have got back in numbers, brilliant run by McKeever, and just when he turned, very mature ahead, content to whip it over the bar. Ball falls again as Armagh come once more. A real opportunity here for Holmes. He got the last one, he turns again. With the same right foot, he gets another one. That could be a decisive score before the end of this game. Two points within the past two minutes for an Armagh side who are currently playing against the breeze. But he did it a few seconds ago from closer range. Did it a little bit farther out. Same result, good point. Two minutes to go to the break. Two points separates the sides. Far side, the, the fullback Conlon didn't get it. Thornton nips inside. Oh, he thought about the opportunity. Puts it back across. The academy flick it back. Oh. And really, what was Kevin Corey thinking about? The ball came across. Dead straight in front of the goals. He elected to punch it. And the opportunity was wasted. Martin once again. This is good combination from the academy. We're quicking the man on the ball. McGuigan looks for the score and McGuigan gets it. And for anybody who follows Tyrone football, no surprise in that. Brian McGuigan, the son of the great Frank McGuigan, showing some of the accuracy which made his father a household name back in the 70s and 80s. And three points again separates the sides. As the academy come once more looking perhaps for another score just before the break. And the referee McAdini taking no nonsense. The ball brought forward 10 yards. McGuigan takes it quickly. The ball pops in again to Red. The Beeman gives it back to Early. And he scored them from this angle before. And the goalkeeper not impressed with the umpire's decision, but Early gets the point. Gordon this time, got himself a yard on his attacker. As he comes once again. Big, big, strong player, Gordon. That was a high challenge by Connor McKeown. My home is with the kick. And that one just sneaked in over the far side. It almost flipped it when it was going the wrong side. But he certainly is an accurate player, Holmes as well. Donahue's kick, it's on the blow, referee McAdini says that's enough for the first half, and what a first half has been for that man in particular, Martin Early, a goal and four to his credit for the academy corner forward, and a half-time score here at Casement Park, St. Patrick's Armagh, not six, St. Patrick's Academy, the Gannon, one six, we'll be right back in a couple of minutes' time with the second half.
welcome back to Casement for the second half of the McCrory final. It's all to play for. The Academy lead 1-6 to 6 points. But in this half, Armagh, the side who have the advantage of the breeze, and they're an interested spectator, the president of the Boys Academy, Don Gallagher, Father Dennis Fall. He actually played with the Armagh College in 1947 when they won the McCrory Cup. Let's get into the action again. A poor ball there by Jordan Quinn. Thomas Dugan, here's so glad. There's McKeever again, picks it up. No change on either side, that's a great run from McKeever. Very forceful, very skillful, still under pressure. Gets it back to Gordon, Gordon elects to shoot himself. On the turn, could be dangerous, floats in there, in towards the square. But it fell kindly in the end for the academy. And that's John McGill. The number five robbed by Gordon again as the academy make heavy work of getting the ball out. And they get the free out for the push in the back. A little bit of relief for the Dungannon College. Made heavy work of getting the ball out there from a very dangerous situation set up by McKeever. And once again, the ball screwed off the foot. And another sideline kick in favour of Armagh. Philip Jordan and Moy. Thought about taking it, we'll leave it for Barry Gordon. Barry Gordon has scored four goals and 14 points in the McCrory Cup campaign so far. A top quality player. He will try to use the breeze, whatever there is of it, although it has to be said it has died a little bit in towards the danger area, the ball. Goes back out again. Sixes and sevens there. It's real ping pong stuff. The academy get it out. And Connor McKeown followed the path of the ball all the way. Kept his eye on it. He's got the opportunity now to clear his lines and to clear his lines with some authority. It's a beautiful interception. And John told out far side. The Armagh captain picks it up. Looks for the options. He's got men inside him. If he spots them. Lex to go on, on his own. And really, that was the wrong option from John Toll, David Turley, the cheering old player, number nine. Was looking for the ball, didn't get it. And a chance wasted. We can see it again. But just as he kicked, he had a man inside, didn't spot him. Ball wrong side. Wide. Cormac McAnallen, the big number six. He's a strong boy as the play goes on. And Armagh come once more. This is fantastic play. That was Declan McCauley. Going through, tripped, and he sets up the opportunity once more. And this time Patrick McKeever will elect to take the ball out of his hands. It's a goal in six to six points. This is the opening score of the first half if he gets it. This one he's aiming for. Straight over Seamus Donahue's goals. As soon as McKeever kicked it, he knew it was over. He urges the rest of his players on. Great score by the young Ballyhagan player. So two points separate the sides as the rain comes down once again in Casement Park. Beautifully picked up by McGuigan, although to be fair, he has been quiet so far. This could be dangerous down in here towards Thornton. Thornton has been good all day. And the referee spots the ball was touched on the ground by Thomas Dugan. And the referee in that instance was quite correct. The cornerback a little bit unfortunate. The ball just spun out of his hands on the wet turf. And this is an opportunity for Early. He's already scored a goal in four. This time he got a goal in five. Very, very accurate indeed. It's now a goal in seven to seven points. A very cool, calm customer. And as you can see, very accurate. Perhaps now the tension, the buzz beginning to spread around Casement Park. A goal between the sides. Armagh struggling for most of the game, behind for most of the game. The ball in deep in towards Thornton. Thornton's in behind the defence. He has it. There's a real opportunity here for Thornton. Referee McAdeney let the advantage go. The fullback Leonard Conlon was struggling all the time. 
shade again here, the ball goes right through. This was determined play from Thornton. This was great play from Thornton. And this was a super finish. Well, the Island Fianna player will celebrate that goal if his team can hold on to this lead at 2 7 uh, to 7 points. There's six points between the sides in the McCrory Cup. The Academy, of course, have only won it once before, back in 1991. Things beginning to go their way. McGuigan parts it outside too early. Thornton again looks for it being held by the fullback. Referee doesn't spot it, says play away. Early comes again. Oh, the ball flashes across the goals. And McGill, the halfback, has support. From an acute angle, puts it in. Well held by keeper. The keeper Kelly, the ball blocked. David Turley makes great space and gets the clearance. And there was real danger there for Arma again. It was good play by Holmes at McGill, and that was a high challenge. And there's no doubt that Paul Holmes' name will go into the book for that uh, rather rash and high challenge. Michael Venner had it and lost it. Jesus. And Paul Holmes was clearly fouled, and that'll be a free to Armagh. They want to get on with it very, very quickly. Down towards McBurk and Gordon. Gordon this time wins it. He has men, he has support. He's got McKeever, he gives it to him. McKeever thought about the shot once, twice, still goes. McKeever gives it back to John Toll, the captain. Armagh needs something, but he loses the ball at the crucial stage. And the academy once more working out of defence. That would be a free out to the academy. And the referee is away to speak to the umpire. And Jerry McClory to the linesman has spotted some infringement. And reckon he McEnany goes to speak to Shane Kelly. Also from Chernanog. Some of the tackles, I suppose, at this stage are a little bit right. And there's heartbreak for the young man. The referee pointed to his boot. And the corner man goes off for that particular tackle. We can take a look at the incident again here. Well, it seemed to be an incident off the ball. The game will restart with a free just below the stand here. It'll be John McGill to take it. And perhaps a few of those last few incidents from Armagh born out of frustration apart from anything else. This is good combination all the same from the academy. Some of it again look to be travelling. Referee let him get away with it. Is it back to Thornton. He's proven to be a very, very lively player in this particular game. A poor ball by him, but out in towards the middle of the park. And Hetherington, well, perhaps suffering from the effects of that last knock, had it and lost it. As Armagh come again, Patrick McKeever takes him on. McKeever takes him on with great skill. That's a fantastic run by the number 11. He parts it inside. This is an opportunity. It's shot. Oh, what a goal! What a goal by Paul McCormick! Well, can he celebrate? Armagh needed it all under pressure. Now the 14 men and the hurling all-star. Well, did he pick his spot or did he pick his spot? But all the good work done in this incident by Patrick McKeever. Beautiful ball in, shift the challenge. Wow, great goal. Armagh right back into it, 2-7 to 1-7. Meanwhile, the academy attempt to make a change. And number 18 there is... Brendan Early of Cull Island, hoping to get into the game. Thornton lets it run to Early. And Early was held back, obviously, very clearly. By Kevin McElvena, and that will be a free in to the academy. Arma not too happy about it. But the replay will confirm it all. The ball just went in front of the defender. Yes, jersey pull. Gary Hetherington 
The man who was involved in that earlier incident has been taken off. The Ryan Millen of the Moy is on. And Martin Gurley increases the academy lead. Very accurate once more from the dead ball situation. He knew it was there as soon as he kicked it. So 2-8 to 1-7. And Armagh 2, they've made a change. Michael Rush is into the side for Armagh. With the number 17 on his back. So two changes, that's Michael Rush into the game and Brendan Early of Full Island for the academy. 2-8 to 1-7, all to play for. Plenty of time left too as well. But Armagh reduced to 14 players after Shane Kelly was sent off for an off-the-ball incident. McGurk, this side. Well, McCormick, the man who got it. And another off-the-ball incident, and Jerry McCurry has spotted it. this time goes to uh, Paul McCormick the goal scorer and Paul McCormick goes off for another off the ball incident an arm up are throwing away this McCrory Cup final real stupidity on their behalf very much in the game, two players away and under the cosh. But what have they got left? Is there a sting in the tail for this Armagh side? That was a high challenge in Gordon. That was a free for him. It's 2-8 to 1-7. 14 points to 10. And John McGook with the tackle. Dugan fit to continue. As Armagh come again. This McCurry Cup final is far from over. Good run by Holmes, clearly fouled, free in. Now, what have Armagh got? Perhaps a time for a few more cool heads at this stage of the game. Well, Holmes, quite a distance. Seems to have the strength. The ball goes into the danger area. It nips out of the hands of Conan Martin. That'll be a 45 kick. How Armagh could do with the score. Could be accurate. That's a beautiful strike by the centre three quarters. Armagh needed it. They needed a score, and that's just what they got. That was brilliant. Beautiful technique. I can tell you they're proud of him and Ballyhagan. There's a goal between the sides. If they could pull off this one, what a famous result that would be. Down to 13 men, three points behind. Gordon battles hard, what a player he is. Still goes, brilliant play with a full forward. Lost it, still managed to get it back. And this time he gets the free in. Opportunity for Armagh to put it down once more through the boot at McKeever. Keeper got a touch to it, there's only two points between them. The tension begins to mount here at Casement Park. Despite the two sendings off, it hasn't been a dirty game, it's been an exciting game. Marvellous battling display here by Armagh. But the academy, when they got the opportunities of the two goals, took both of them. That could be the telling factor at the end of this game. Now, this is good combination from them with the ball thrown away. But it fell kindly again for the academy. And the referee two yards from play. Marks that down as a free. This time, early Alex to put it on the sod. 
one nine and two eight two points between them three minutes to go early flicks it early flicks it over the academy substitutes celebrate that one amidst all the excitement there's a very very calm player indeed we're into time added on for the stoppages and there will be at least a couple of minutes for that for the two sendings off depends on which referee McAdini decides to add on Honnell Martin the midfielder for the academy losing it again and possession goes back to Armagh brilliant one by Michael Rush the Kalehana lad lips inside two challenges still goes gives it back to McKeever McKeever had it lost it but still goes very strong work for McKeever and McKeever gets the inevitable in the closing seconds he gets the free this should be a simple opportunity for Holmes he elects to take the point to leave it just two points between the sides and indeed there is the final whistle and the academy can celebrate only their second McCrory Cup final Martin O'Farland Peter Hearn can celebrate so too can the likes of Martin early perhaps that sums it all up for the, for the McCrory Cup but still tonight on St Patrick's Night it's a night for celebration for St Patrick's Boys Academy Dungannon the match Marty First of all, what did you feel about your team's performance? How good was it? It played very well in the first half, but during the second half, we started to slack a little bit. When Armagh had the two players sent off, they came back in it a lot more. And lucky enough, finished stronger. What does it mean to you personally to win the Iggy Jones Memorial Trophy? It's a great honour, especially because Iggy is from the himself. He's been very pleased about it. Well, what do you think made the difference today between the two sides? Uh, on the day, we got the breaks. The goal at the very start set us up nicely. <laughs> And when we were looking rough in the start of the second half, we got another goal from Richard Thornton, so in the end that proved vital. Yeah. You seem to be playing all the football out there. Were you determined to do that, even though it was uh, such a big occasion? Yeah, well, going into the match, we knew we were the footballing team and the conditions suited us today. In the end, that's the way it proved out. How important to the, to the flow of the game do you feel were the two sendings off? I think the sendings off actually made it that bit harder for us because it made our man more determined. Uh, sending off always uh, rattles the team that benefit from it. So we're just glad to get through in the end. Only your second win of this, and what does it mean for the school? It's a great honour, yeah. 91 was the first year we won it. So it was a great honour for me personally to be only the second captain in history to lift her for the academy. Brother Ellis, what's the feeling in the RMA school after that defeat? Devastation, to put it mildly. They're, <clears throat> they are um, very, very disappointed and heartbroken, but... They had thought back for a couple of days to pick themselves up again and let's go, go again. Well, I think with the, the goal in the early minutes settled our team. Uh, in the first half and the second half, we expected Armada to come strong at us. And they did, but again, the, the goal that Thornton scored settled us. And after that, I thought Armada were always chasing the game. Now, they got a good goal, but somehow not, I always felt we pulled out. I think the goal that Thornton... Breaches of discipline will not be tolerated by the men in charge of Gaelic Games.